everyone, it's Jowie, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get a perfect score on the SAT subject test in Math Level 2. Before I start the video, I just wanted to make a few things clear. First of all, when I was studying and preparing for this test at the end of my junior year, I did study for a while, like three months, through a prep class that met once a week. However, I do not think it is worth going to a prep class, especially if you are a strong math student. And I'm just going to tell you all the information that I learned and give you all the tips and secrets, so keep on watching. Also, just because this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to get a great score on this math level 2 test, I'm not going to say that or make any claims that this is definitely going to get you a perfect score. This is just what I did to get the score that I wanted, which happened to be an 800. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I used, and this I think is totally necessary, is The Baron's Book. Good old Baron's. I have to say I have a love-hate relationship with Baron's, the company, because they make kind of questionable humanities books, in my opinion, but in terms of like STEM, highly recommend. The first thing I would do is go through the actual topics in this book and I'll show you there are like topics like chapters like one two and three and they have problems at the end so read through all of those things those chapters are not too long and make sure you do the questions after it make sure you understand everything because that's basically what's on the test if you have like two to three months to study don't go straight to the practice test at the end of this book and I'll tell you why <laughs> So this is the next book I'm going to be talking about. It is the Dr. Chung's SAT to Mathematics Level 2 workbook. It has 12 complete practice tests, which is why I love it. But the practice tests are extremely difficult, which is why I don't love it. Also, there are 61 like tips in the beginning, but I really wouldn't use those uh, because they're not that helpful. I mean, like, really not that helpful, unless you're trying to reference something that you got wrong. This book is important because it has so many practice tests and yes, the questions are way harder. Like the probability questions you see in this book, you were probably never going to see on the actual test. But the whole point is that like after you've conquered this book, you feel like you can conquer anything and then you'll take the actual test and you'll breeze through it and get an 800 in an ideal situation. I took most of the practice tests in this book. I don't think you have to take all of them. Just take a few and make sure you circle the ones that you skipped because there is a guessing penalty for this test. It's a quarter of a point. So I can talk about scoring in another video, but that does add up. So if you are completely unsure of an answer, it would be best to leave it blank. So once you've finished one of these practice tests, go to the multiple choice answers but not the explanations, just the answers, and correct your answers. So then go back to the multiple choice questions that you got wrong in the first place and figure out what you did wrong and how you were going to fix that next time. This is the most important step of any standardized testing because they're all, all copies of the test are more or less the same and it's all about beating the system, just knowing what to expect because they're pretty predictable, like they're standardized after all. What I did is I would also take my notebook after I finished every single practice test and I would write down the question number, what the correct answer was, what I did wrong, exactly like why, like I literally wrote out an explanation that said like D is the correct answer and I was wrong because and then, most importantly, write how you are going to avoid that same mistake the next time you come across a question like this. This is a very important process. Just reading the explanation is not enough. If you can't figure out how to do the question, make sure you, um, of course, compare with the explanation and find out how you did everything wrong. Maybe look at some videos online. I know this is tedious, takes a lot of effort. No one likes to do this step. But if you want to get an 800, you might have to do a little bit of this. <laughs> For this book, um, all the practice tests, don't take the scores too seriously because honestly, 
they're kind of just uh, all over the place. And the tests just get harder and harder as you get on, so maybe not. don't start with uh, number 12. For all practice tests though, the method that I just explained works really well in my opinion and for me. You know, marking all the wrong answers you got, writing down exactly why you got them wrong and everything. Before you take your uh, the next practice test, you might want to review your answer explanations and make some flashcards for some formulas and things that you really don't know. Back to all of you guys who have been waiting to the last minute or maybe just like have a month or a few weeks left before the test. I would recommend going back to your Barron's book and completing the five practice tests that are in here because they are pretty helpful and they are a bit harder than the ones that you will see on the actual College Board exam but they're not like terribly hard. And last but not least, the most important and helpful tool that you can use to study for the mathematics subject test is the official college board issued mathematics level 2 subject test workbook and uh, it usually is a pretty thin book. It has only practice tests, like four of them, comes with answer sheets, everything. Take them all but like two weeks before the test. Um, by the way, all the tests that you take should be timed. Like set apart an hour to take the test and then another like 30 to 45 minutes just to grade it and everything. There's no point in taking a practice test if you're not doing it under time conditions. And I think that the more you take um, practice tests, the more you'll kind of get an idea of, okay, I can do the first um, like 30 questions in the first like 20 minutes or something like that. There are 50 test questions on the test. They get harder as you go. Be careful and definitely go really fast through the first few questions, like 30 questions, and then once you get to 31, you know you're going to have to spend more time. Another thing I would like to address is the fact that this is a calculator test. You can use your fancy schmancy graphing calculator. I usually have my graphing calculator and then my scientific calculator just in case that one malfunctions. Use your calculator to your advantage. When you have like graphs that just look like awkward things you just that you cannot sketch out, use your calculator. When you just don't know how to answer a question but you know how to do it in like 30 seconds or so on a calculator, use the calculator. Like the calculator is just so helpful for so many things. Honestly, I think that if you do all of these things, if you're, you're of course taking time tests, maybe doing like one time test per week, then you are going to be in great shape. So yeah, good luck. I hope this video was really helpful. Please let me know down below what other videos you would like to see from me because I guess I'm a college related channel from now on. <laughs> and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!